In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Maya Paldo Kekoman. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the 65th anniversary mass celebration of the canonical coronation of Virgen de los Remedios, the patroness of Pampanga, Philippines. Thank God that the Archbishop has opened the cathedral to us during the second year of COVID-19 pandemic to celebrate this annual pilgrimage and mass honoring our Blessed Mother under her title, Virgen de los Remedios, Virgin of Remedy. We believe in Mary's powerful intercession, and we know that our unceasing prayers to her, to her to intercede to her Son, Jesus Christ, will bear fruits. Many of us have personal stories to share with others about our devotion to Virgen de los Remedios. So please, don't hesitate to tell these stories of healing miracles and answered prayers with your friends and family members. It's our way of fulfilling our role as missionary disciples of Christ. This year's Mass and Canonical Coronation of Virgen de los Remedios falls on the 500th year anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines and the 250th year anniversary of the founding of the first mission in California, Mission San Gabriel Arcangel by St. Junipero Serra. The Archbishop has declared this year in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles a jubilee year with a challenging theme, Forward in Mission. It's not a mere celebration of the past, but a challenge of the future to share our faith in Jesus Christ and His love for everyone, especially with young people and those who have stayed away from the Catholic Christian faith. For us Filipinos, it's a bigger challenge because as the theme of the 500 years of Christianity says, we are gifted to give. Pinagpala tayo ng Panginoon ng matinding pananampalataya sa Kanya. Kaya tanggapin natin ang hamon na ipahayag ang pagmamahal ni Kristo sa buong mundo. In the recent visit of the Apostolic Nuncio of the Philippines, Archbishop Charles John Brown to Pampanga, he reminded Kapampangans of the Holy Father's special endearment to Filipino migrants. Pope Francis hails the Filipinos in the diaspora as smugglers of fate, which means that whenever we Filipinos go in the world for work, we also sow the fate. This is true for us living in Los Angeles and other cities. We're filling up churches in many parishes in the U.S. Our challenge is to continue this blessed infectiousness with our children and youth. This year, I'd like to welcome in a special way my colleague in the ministry here in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, His Excellency Bishop Mark Trudeau, Auxiliary Bishop for the region of San Pedro. Bishop Trudeau and I worked together at St. John's Seminary for four years, just a few years ago. He was the rector and I was his vice rector. He was also my classmate in the seminary. Welcome, Bishop Mark. Let's give him a big warm of applause. I also would like to welcome Father Kenneth Salas from the Diocese of Oakland, who hails from Kandava, Pampanga, the host town. Father Kenneth, Kenneth Salas will be giving the homily as a son of Kandaba. Welcome, Father Kenneth. And I welcome my fellow clergy members, my brother priests, deacons, here among us. So sa inyong lahat, isang masayang papupugay at patanggap sa celebration ito. Dakal pong salamat, keng pamantabe you at support just a fraternal reminder, please keep your mask on throughout the celebration. 
Thank you. So as we gather, we call on our loving God and we rely on his gracious mercy forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, in my thoughts, words, in what I have done, and what I have done, to my fault, to my fault, to my most precious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels of Satan, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
ang mamasang ibat king libro ring bilang. Tinipaya king biga ing ginong at may salita ya kang Moises. De kaya na na laketang upayang binyena kang Moises. Ding pitong pulong makatwa. Inyang tinggap da ing upaya migmula lang may salita ng anting propeta. Ating aduang makatwa Amen atili king kampo ilari edad at medad kabilang dala ring pitong pulong pamuntok ame pili dapat ela me kabe karela makanyan man mida kayanan lang upaya at ilaman me magsalita lang ating propeta ating metong akaya na kanalalaki a populaing linapit kang Moises. Nga na, iedad po at imedad, magsalita lang ang ting propeta king kampo. Dapat, nga na Moises, pigaganakan mo ing mabawas ko dangalan nung malyari mo sana ding sablang Israelita, midakayanan lang upaya, ban magsalita lang ang ting propeta. Ia mana yang kita?
pagbasa mula sa sulat ni Apostol Santiago. Pakinggan ninyo ito, kayong mayayaman. Tumangis kayo at humagulgol dahil sa mga kapighati ang darating sa inyo. Bulok na ang inyong mga kayamanan at kinain na ng tanga ang inyong mga damit. Kinain ng kalawang ang inyong ginto at pila. At ang kalawang ding iyon ay magiging katibayan laban sa inyo at parang apoy na nauubos sa iyong laman. Iyan ang kayamanang inimpok ninyo para sa mga huling araw. Sumisigaw laban sa inyo ang upa na hindi ninyo ibinigay sa mga gumapos sa inyong bukirin. Umabot sa langit ang pandinig ng Panginoong makapangyarihan sa lahat. Ang mga hinaing ng mga mang-aani na iyong inapi. Nagpakalayaw kayo at nagpasasa dito sa lupa. Nagpataba kayo para mang hayop na papatayin. Hinatulan ninyo at ipinapatay ang mga patuwid. Hindi sila lumaban sa inyo. Ang Salita ng Diyos. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink, because you belong to Christ. Amen, I say to you, you surely will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna. 
into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their, wor- where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Your Excellency, the Most Reverend Vincent, Mark Vincent Trudeau, Auxiliary Bishop, San Pedro Pastoral Region of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, Father David Gallardo, Director of the Cathedral of Our Lady of Angels, the concelebrating priests, deacons, to my fellow Kapampangans, especially my Kabalens in Kandava, my Apaoras Pu, a truly blessed and faith-filled afternoon to all who are attending this momentous occasion, both here in person and via live stream. The central theme of the ministry of Jesus is this, the kingdom of God has come. That is the main message. And for the Israelites, this meant two things for the listeners. First, it will, not, it will set everything right. And second, it will solve the problem of evil. This makes sense to them because their history is replete with hopelessness and powerlessness. Now the question is, how? How will everything be set right? And how will the problem of evil be solved? Jesus described through his ministry how the kingdom of God looks like through the parables, miracles, purity system, table fellowship, and of course, with the company that he kept. Now let's focus on that last one, the company that he kept. We are very much aware that Jewish society was highly structured. So, in-group and out-group mentality is the basic stance. If you belong to one group, that is the one and the only group you can and should belong. It is your microcosm. You should only be within the graces of your exclusive group. If you belong to the Sadducees, you live in that circle alone. The Essenes, not only are one group, but they also marked the desert as their home. For a zealot, a good Roman is a dead Roman. The Pharisees, the most maligned group in the history of religion, have that huge share of exclusivity and legalism. The tax collectors were a company of their own. Then you have the women, children, 
sinners, the poor and the oppressed, with whom Jesus mostly related with. If you belong to one group, you cannot and ought not to freely associate with the others. The lives of these people are clearly defined. Jesus associated with all of the groups of people and broke the lines of demarcation. He crossed over from one group to another. Unless we shatter these worlds, the kingdom of God will not come. If we remain as a close group and minister only to one another and become obvious of those who are outside of us, especially the least, the last, and the lost, the disenfranchised, the kingdom of God will never come. Our first reading tells us that when Eldad and Medad were left in the camp prophesying because the Spirit came to rest on them too and did not join the group of elders, Joshua was quick to react and admonished Moses to stop them. Moses retorted, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? The Lord bestows His Spirit on everyone. The second reading talks about the misery and the wretchedness in store for the rich. That their wealth on earth will rot away and everything they own will corrode. There will be a reckoning of their unjust actions towards their workers, definitely not belonging to their affluent group. In simple terms, the unjust, the greedy, and self-regarding rich, they had it coming. The disciples had the very same predicament in our gospel today. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. And we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. My dear brothers and sisters, listen intently to the reply of Jesus. Here it goes. Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives us a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, you surely will not you surely will not lose his reward my dear brothers and sisters let us allow those words of jesus to sink in for a few seconds do not prevent him there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. How many times do we also think the way the disciples did? We think that belonging to a particular group necessarily closes us to others. It should not be so. The exclusivity should not be absolute and confining. In fact, it should merely be a starting point for the growth and opening of the circle insofar as others also share our mission. Indeed, at times our belongingness to some group can lead us to an exclusivist mindset 
and can nurture prejudices against certain people. Instead of seeing others as outsiders or competitors or worse, enemies, let us consider them the way God does. His beloved children, precious to Him, worth saving no matter how wayward and obstinate they are to us. And so, dear brothers and sisters, whatever group we belong, each of us is gifted to give. So, to think that Christian or Catholic is superior and inferior over another Christian and Catholic is not a gospel truth. Superiority and condescension have no such place in our ministry in the kingdom of God. Ministry is not a prerogative of those in power. It is not just something that is delegated. The whole church is a ministerial kind of church. When we were baptized, we received charisms from God. These charisms are used for none other than service, service to others. So our task, no matter what group we belong, is to manifest an ecclesial presence, that ecclesial presence in the world, with the mission of transforming the world. Jesus showed us a glimpse of the kingdom of God by the company that he kept. Let us keep Jesus in our company. We should remain connected with him and forge a personal relationship with him. The Blessed Virgin Mary becomes our best example here. She tried her hardest to be fully present in the life of Jesus. She showed us the way on how to become available to her son. Therefore, if Jesus makes himself available to us, we should make ourselves available to him as well. We should emulate our Blessed Mother in her indefatigable energy and spirit to keep the company of Jesus in our lives, to know, love, and serve Him all the more. Ding sablang pisamban, ampong bisitas, akekang delawan, o virhen amaslag. Ding anggang memalen, pigdalamung lama. Metula lang dakal ke kapasalama Kasal pantayanan iyon lad mi lablab Ing pami kalugut agad li nagana The Virgin Mother offered her lamak, offered her son to us and the world to stay close to him she is our model of faith and charity. Jesus is mercy. Piedad, caridad, y perdón. Faith, charity, and mercy. Let this be our prayer for this Mass. That our ministry, wherever it will be, will be just like, like our Blessed Mother, keeping Jesus in our company so that our actions are always loving and liberating. This perhaps could be our humble little sharing in making God's kingdom come. Amen.
Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all beings visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father, born of all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from the true God, begotten and not made, such as such a Father, through whom all things are made. Christ men of our salvation, we keep down now from heaven by the Holy Spirit, the incarnate to the Holy Spirit, and the For our sake, our sins crucified and our conscious life, he suffered and death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Rejoicing in our redemption and in our hope of salvation, let us ask God, through the intercession of the Virgen de los Remedios, for the needs of the Church and of the whole world. Santo Papa Francisco, Kinkiakatamo Arsobispo, I Jose, Ding Obispo sa Ding Mabilo Kakaparian, Maging Matibela sa Kinkasalpantayanan, Bandalang Apasik ng Anlub, Ding Sasalpantaya, At Aosukan Dalang Manatili, Kinkasalpantayanan, At Munye Patutukan Iti, Kinkarelang Aldoldo, Pami Bebe. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in government, para sa mga nagsisilbi sa pamahalaan, naway sila ay maging masigasig sa pagdadala ng pagunlad, kapayapaan at katarungan sa kanilang mga komunidad, naway kanilang palaging iginagalang ang mga karapatang pantao, lalong-lalo na ang kalayaan sa pananampalataya. Naway ang pamahalaan ay maging taimtim na kasama ng mga obispos at kaparian sa pagtugon ng pangangailangan ng mga maralita at naapi. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who left their homelands in pursuit of freedom, alleviation of poverty, and better opportunities, Por aquellos que dejan sus patrias en la búsqueda de la libertad, el algaramiento de su pobreza y la, y la oportunidad de una vida mejor, sobre todos los niños, para que siempre ellos puedan ser bienvenidos en un lugar nuevo que respete su dignidad humana y les proporcione nuevas esperanzas, y que puedan estar protegidos con las leyes de inmigración apropiadas. Let us pray to the Lord. For the protection and care of our common home, that we may be responsible stewards of God's creation by changing our lifestyle for the preservation of air, water, energy, and environment, 
May we always protect the world and not prey on it. May we sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, elderly, and the sick, especially those affected by the pandemic, para ka rin pakakalulu, di mga tua at masakit lalo, lalo ding may apektuan kaniting daralan a pandemia. Mirinan la sana ng sikanan, pag-asa at kapaldanan, dagdaman day ing kaya katamang lugod ang timong kapatad. Abyanan da sana, in karelang dangalan ang timong anak ning Diyos. Let us pray to the Lord. For the departed, para sa lahat ng mga sa makabilang buhay, naway makamtan nila ang ipinangako sa mga taong nanatiling tapat hanggang sa wakas at tamsahin ang walang hanggang piging sa langit kasama ang pong may kapal. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, you know the different needs of your people in this life. Hear us and answer the prayer of all who believe in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth, for in your mercy and justice you cast down the mighty and exalt the lowly. Your marvelous wisdom is shown above all in the Word made flesh and in his virgin mother. For he, your Son, who freely humbled himself even unto death on the cross, now sits at your right hand and is radiant with unending glory, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And she, the virgin who wished to be called your servant, was singled out to be mother of the Redeemer and true mother of all the living. Now she is exalted above the choirs of angels and reigns in glory with her son, praying for all of us, the Queen of mercy, pleading for grace. Merciful Lord, look upon us, your servants, who by crowning this image of the mother of your son, proclaim him as king of all creation and approach her as our queen. Give us the grace to follow them in serving you, to do what love demands for the sake of our brothers and sisters, to deny ourselves and spend ourselves so as to win our neighbors for you, to be lowly on earth so as to be exalted in heaven where you reward your faithful servants with a crown of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of yours, for the praise and glory of his men, for our good and the good of all of the Lord's church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the first of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, other passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. After months of lockdowns, we are back here at the Cathedral of Our Lady in gratitude for Mary's help and intercessions. During these dark days of loneliness and fear, we recourse to Mary, who is our hope and consolation. We continue to entrust our lives to the Blessed Mother who unceasingly intercedes with all her heart for her suffering people. De Maria aprendemos a rendirnos a la voluntad de Dios en todas las cosas. De Maria aprendemos a confiar aun cuando toda la esperanza parece haber desaparecido. De María, aprendemos a amar a Cristo, su Hijo, el Hijo de Dios. Bapu María, kaniting penandit, ausan da kayong nuan at pasalamatan king keganaganang lugud at panalangin. Pitungan da kayong corona bilang ke kaming reina at paniwalan ming tutu ing makasalale kami karing malugud a palad ding palad ning indu ning kapaldanan ing ke kaming patulunan birhen de los remedios maraming 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 salamat maria sa lahat ng pag-ibig at sa bawat dalangin Dakal akapasalamatan ang iyang pang mi, we are very deeply grateful. Estamos agradecidos a usted, nuestra amada madre. Devotion to Virgen de los Remedios comes to a full circle this evening. It all began in France by St. John Mata, traveled to Spain, the Americas, Mexico, and the Philippines. Kapampangans brought it here at the cathedral. Tonight, we are joined by His Excellency with ancestors from France. Merci, Monsignor Trudeau. Our special thanks to the concelebrating priests, deacons, lectors, and acolytes. Like Mary, may you persistently remain faithful to the will of God in your ministries. We thank the Eucharistic ministers, assers, and cathedral staff. May Mary always guide you in your daily work. We invite you to support the ministries of the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels, who has allowed us to hold our celebration here for the past 15 years. Baskets will be available on your way out. Thank you for your generosity. This evening, you heard the beautiful voices of a special Virgen de los Remedios Mass Choir composed 
of voices from the Diocese of Orange, with lead cantor Mark Peng, under the direction of Dr. Nobe De Palan and the accompaniment of David Ball. Thank you for your sacred music, and may you always sing the Canticles of Mary. Every year, the Knights of Columbus fulfill their filial duty of escorting Our Lady in procession. Like Saint Joseph, may you always be faithful and virtuous witnesses to Christ and His Church. Thank you very much. Be but yes. Our wholehearted thanks to this year's co host, the Candabenos of Southern California and the people of Candaba, as well as to many volunteers who share their time, talent, and treasure. May you always be blessed with God's unending grace, love, and mercy. We also appreciate the presence of religious communities, civic organizations, alumni associations, media representatives, devotos Latinos, pilgrims from the Archdiocese of San Francisco, San Fernando, Pampanga, and Los Angeles, those from the dioceses of Oakland, San Bernardino, San Diego, Orange, and Las Vegas, visitors from Virginia, New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Arizona, and other places, also those who are joining us on live stream. May you always open your hearts to Mary and experience the love of her son, Jesus. We shall meet again next year, Sunday, September 25, 2022. May I now call the representatives of Kandava to present the symbolical crown to the co-host of the 66th canonical coronation anniversary, the people of Masantol. Our prayers for a grace-filled evangelization and apostolic work ahead. On the occasion of 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, may I now invite His Excellency Bishop Trudeau for his greetings and to bless these 1,000 rosaries to be distributed after Mass as a symbol of sharing our gift of faith, bringing Christ through Mary, Virgen de los Remedios. Before we have the uh, blessing of the rosaries, um, uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm not from Papanga, and uh, so when Father Odell asked me to uh, be the celebrant for this Mass, I had, I had to look up uh, La Virgen de los Remedios, and I was thinking how appropriate it is for us to celebrate 
uh, and call on uh, the Virgin of Remedy um, during this difficult time of pandemic. Uh, a mother's care is always needed, but I think especially in, in these uh, rather dark times. So uh, we are all um, uh, the children of the uh, Virgen de los Remedios. We call on Mary to intercede and, and to pray for us. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, uh, Father Rodell also mentioned at the beginning of our um, liturgy that uh, we are celebrating both 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines and 250 years of Christianity here in Los Angeles. Uh, and the two are related. Uh, the uh, colonization and evangelization of the Philippines began 500 years ago at the beginning of the Spanish expansion um, and evangelization and here in California the missions were begun at the end of the Spanish um, colonization and expansion but if you think about it uh, at one time the Philippines and California were both part of the Viceroyalty of New Spain. So we're, uh, we're compadres, we're, we're in the same country um, from many years ago. Um, and also, uh, you know, I know how the thing with, with uh, how Filipinos call people cousins, or they say that this person is my cousin, and I figured out that what that means is that your grandmother and my grandfather lived in, the, in a village or city that started with the same letter. So my grandfather is from Mason, Illinois. So is anybody here from a village or, or area that starts with an M? So we're cousins. <laughs> and I think that's beautiful to state because we are all uh, family in God. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to celebrate as both as Catholics, um, as children of Mary, children of God. Uh, so so uh, as your, your primo, as, uh, probably I'm more Tio than anything uh, now, uh, I, I certainly pray for your community, um, for our community of faith that we grow and uh, we bless these rosaries brought by these young people um, who are the new evangelizers because we need to go into the next 500 years. Um, you know, you can only celebrate 500 years once. The next one we probably won't be around for. Um, but, but these young people are the first step of that, aren't they? Uh, the step of faith. They are the ones who we pass our faith on to and then they will be passing it on to others. So we'll pray for God's blessing on these rosaries. Blessed be our God and Father who has given us the mysteries of his Son to be pondered with devotion and celebrated with faith. May he grant us his faithful people that by praying the rosary we may with Mary the mother of Jesus seek to keep his joys sorrows and glories in our minds and hearts and we ask this through Christ our Lord Let's give our young people an applause.
Please stand for the blessing. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness, pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>